be destroyed. You will not be able to tolerate each other on a day-to-day level. You will not be able to let one another speak. You will hate each other. You will be intolerant of each other. You will lack patience with one another. Your words will be distorted in the hearing of one another. You will hate yourselves. You will despise yourselves one to another. You will despise the other person's thinking, the other person's thinking process, the the other person's views, the other person's ideology. You will hate the person next to you as if they were anathema. You will say, I hate you to each other. You will hurt each other. You will fight. A brother will fight a brother. A woman, her own mother. You will hate each other and despise each other on account of the madness I send among you. A people of madness. That is you, United States of America. Thus saith the Lord. Your times are upon you. Your times are coming upon you with so much swiftness. So much vitriol. So much violence in the streets of America. So much damage to property. You will be lighting cars on fire in this country in a way that hasn't been done for decades. Not since the civil rights riots of the United States. Not since the civil rights movement have there been so much outward show of violence. Not since the days of civil protests, public demonstrations, national unrest, fighting for an ideal. So you will fight yourselves and destroy your democracy that you worship. You will destroy this democracy that you worship. It's a God to you. It's a God that you worship. It's a God to you. You exalt it above my word. You push so hard to be free. You're so fearful of not having freedom. But this is the very thing I will take from you. You will be shackled up. You will be bound up by harsh laws and decrees. (sighs) Intermediate laws that come to usher you into a time of testing. Intermediate laws like a something like a bridge bridging bridging laws bridging laws that are going to take us from the system of laws that we have right now the laws that we know the existing codex of law sort of like a like a temporary measure almost Something like the mandates that we had to live through with 2020. 
abridgment laws. Not quite official, but also not illegal. Can't say it's illegal, but it's just not official. It's just not done the right way, but because it's not illegal, you can't really challenge it. You can't really strike it down. You can't really go to court and win. Because God says they will have a ready-made excuse. And they will say, it's what's needed for now. Look at the country. Look at the situation, America. These laws are keeping us safe. It's only for a while. It's only for a period. It's only for a transition. It's only for a moment. But God says they're lying to you. They're absolutely lying to you. That is not what the laws are for at all. The laws are the initial framework of a totally different type of government. Yah said, and I can see, he said, the way that Noah built the ark, and I see a man starting with what looks like a whalebone corset. A whalebone corset is what a woman wears in the old Victorian era. And to make the whalebone corset, you actually had to gather up the whale bones and put them together in sequence and then sew them into the material. And that then formed the basis of the corset itself. The whalebone gave it shape. It was the skeleton. And then the corset, of course, covered the skeleton. And then that was the fabric that hid. Yah says, in the same way that Noah built the ark, starting with the bare bones of the ark, the wood that he was hammering, the wood that he was shaping and putting it into place piece by piece. And you see the shape of the ark coming together. That is how these laws are. These laws are the preliminary structure. They have nothing to do with the old system of government. These laws have nothing to do with the old system of government. These laws don't exist to preserve. Yah says these laws will not exist to preserve the old system of how America is. When you see these types of laws coming in, laws that are not quite illegal, but at the same time, they shackle you enough. They shackle you enough to make you uncomfortable, but they will tell you that the laws cannot be challenged because these are the laws keeping us safe for now. Then you know that then you know that these laws actually exist as the mounting framework, the mounting framework for a new system of government that is coming into the United States. Mandatory law and order, he's saying militarized state heavy military presence in the streets of america as if it is baghdad you will see this in your lifetime military presence in the street like you did in baghdad and basra your own soldiers rolling around on american streets in tanks on a daily basis He says they will be monitoring you and they will be policing you with the same harshness that they have done to foreign populations. You think these men are friendly. These men are trained to kill. That's what you are saying. You think an American soldier is a friendly person. You would call him a friendly. Yah says these men are not friendly. They are subjected to harsh training conditions. They're trained to kill. They shoot to kill. They are not friendly. They are not approachable, God says. These people will be cold to you. You will feel so rejected. You will feel so confused. You will feel so dazed. You will feel so afraid when you talk to an American soldier and he looks at you as, as though you are less than nothing. Emotionally detached. They will not feel any rapport with you. You will not go up to these men on the street and say stuff like, hey, what's going on? 
Hey, what's going on? What's going on? Why are you guys out here? You will not approach them like that. Two or three of them will bark at you at the same time and tell you, back up, back up, back up. They will be so aggressive. They've been trained that way. But you've never had to experience it because the way they are trained is to intimidate and create fear in foreign populations. And God says, this is what will happen to you. This is your fate. He says, you will eat the meal you serve to other nations. What you serve to other nations, America, you are now going to consume it. It's going to be your future. You will not be able to come back from this. I see a person trying to claw their way back. You know, when these these famous people, when when famous people get into scandals, when famous people have a really big fall, when famous people have been embarrassed so big, they have a publicist. And the job of the publicist is then to say, we need to get you in a movie. We need to get you in a musical. We need to get you in something big. We need to get you in something beautiful. We need to get you on the cover of this and that magazine. And that way the star tries to claw their way back to fame. I see a woman trying to, all I see is a female's hands trying to claw her way back. But America is not able to claw her way back. I see there's just something pulling her down. I don't see what it is that's pulling her down, but something is inexorably, unmistakably pulling this woman down. And she, she cannot, she cannot come back from whatever it is that's pulling her down. Those hands those manicured hands are not going to make it. She's going to rip. She's going to rip that gel manicure. She's going to rip those perfectly made fingernails trying to claw her way back. The Lord says you will fall from grace. Publicly in front of everyone. Publicly in front of the whole world. The shame of America will be witnessed across The known world, God says you will be put into great shame and humbling in front of the whole world. A singular embarrassment, he says. Something singular will happen. And we we just won't be able to tolerate the shame here from it or explain it away or come back from it. The Lord says, this is the way of things for the wicked. The wicked will be put into silence. The wicked will be put to shame. The Lord says, the the wicked will be humbled and made to stand like a child in the corner. You will not be able to have the same kind of influence that you have enjoyed always. You will not be able to enter into a room as an American and command the room internationally or on a personal level as an object of mockery, you will have to hide away in a corner. Yah says, I will remove your coat from on you. I will remove your mantle. I will remove your covering. I will remove my hand from on you and you will not have anyone to cover you anymore for the things that you have done. No one will make excuses for you anymore. No one will extend you um, consideration. No one will, will extend you leeway. No one will give you wiggle room. God says, America, you will be held to the same impossible high standard that you have held other nations to. Requiring of other nations, Yah says, um, things that you could not possi- they could not possibly deliver. An impossible high standard, the Lord says. A standard you knew that they could not keep, knowing that they would fail to meet the obligation so that you could judge them unfaithful. 
the same high standard will be applied to you. This same impossible high standard. Impossible to meet, impossible to keep. You will fall from grace. Yah says you will be a pariah. Embarrassing. Ashamed everywhere you go. And this is coming to you soon. An international humbling. This is coming to you very soon. You will be humbled in the international space. Something is going to happen and America is going to look ashamed. A public scandal, a shame. Between countries, this is not an internal shame. This is not when something happens here. A local breaking story. And then other people only look and they watch our news and they watch us trying to handle our things. No. Yah says this one will happen out of your backyard. This is out of your backyard. This is out of your purview with other people. Something big will happen. And America will look embarrassed. America will look bad. A shaming scandal. As only the start of your problems, the start of your woes, the start of your great international embarrassments. Your great international embarrassments. This is with an S. This is plural. Many faux pas. Many, many hot mics. Many wrong statements. Words that should not be said. Said. And then you lose favor. You upset the wrong people. You upset powerful people. You lose favor. You lose friendship. You lose alliances. You lose deals. You're not going to be in the room anymore. This is what God is saying. They won't invite you into the rooms anymore. I, ha I see people having closed sessions without the United States present. Which is just almost inconceivable. They'll meet together and they won't invite you there. They'll meet together and they won't ask you to come. They won't even grace you with an invitation once things get bad enough. You will not be invited. You will not be asked to attend. Thus says the Lord, I have seen you for what you are. I see you for what you are. You are marauders. A marauder is a pirate. To anyone who listens and doesn't understand, a marauder is a pirate. A marauder is a bandit, a highwayman. This type of person comes upon other people to take their stuff. Their entire modus operandi is plunder. To attack suddenly, to attack using craft, strategy, or in some cases, raw power. If a marauder and his gang are powerful enough, they don't need to use stealth. They don't need to use craftiness and trickery. If a marauder is strong enough, he can just come upon you and take whatever you have. And he will be successful. Power, might, intimidation, Yah says. You are marauders. You take what isn't yours. You only do things to realize a benefit. You're very selfish. You're very self-centered. You don't share. You're like a locust. You don't leave anything on the branches for other people. You are unjust. You glean to the edges of the field. You glean to the edges of the field and you leave nothing behind for the poor, the orphan, and the widow. In the Bible, when it's time to harvest, you're not supposed to harvest your field in a square. Your field is already a square. You're not supposed to cut all the barley, all the wheat, all the corn 
in the entire square. You're supposed to harvest in a circle, leaving all the plants in the corners, in the four corners for the poor to harvest, for the homeless to harvest, for the widow and the orphan to harvest because they have no man to take care of them and they are not as protected in the society. Everybody is supposed to harvest in a circle so that those who are at the fringes of society can be taken care of. But God says that America will ride the tractor from edge to edge of the square and she leaves absolutely nothing behind for the poor and the needy. You don't know how to share. You're selfish. You only think of yourself. Yah says you never come to the table unless the deal is going to favor you. Almost absolutely. <sighs> Just go out and tell them what I said. I have not changed anything concerning you. I have not even moved one straw of your punishments, not a single nail of the indictments against you has been pulled out. You have dislodged nothing of what I have said against you. You have removed nothing. You have dislodged nothing of what I've said against you. This is what I'm saying to you now. That I will come upon you of a sudden. Of a sudden. Suddenly I will come upon you. And you will not know from where I am coming. You will not know from where the blow will be struck. A heart heavy blow. You will wear black in this nation. And you will mourn. You will weep, you will cry, you will lament. You will feel like your heart is torn from your body. You will feel as if you've lost your child. You will surely cry in America. You have made many women cry. You have made mothers wail. You also will wail. You also will cry. You also will lament. You also will beat your breast because you will lack understanding about why. You will say why. You will ask why. And there will be none to tender for you an explanation. You have rolled the dice one too many times. You have stepped outside my boundaries one too many times one too many times america you have kicked against the goads you have pushed open the fence and found your way outside into the field you will wear the black you will wear black You will see what it feels like to be robbed. You will feel, you will know what it feels like to be robbed of what you hold dear. This is the will of God. This is the word of the Lord. This civil war will <sighs> dressed malicious, dressed, dressed malicious, armed malicious, independently armed. They have money to buy guns themselves. They have ammunition themselves. They've stockpiled ammunition. They have money to buy their own um, light artillery, not the government, people, individuals, groups. 
farming communities, he says. He's, they have money to dress and arm themselves, even though they're not the government. And these people, they will be fighting hand-to-hand -hand combat in some situations. Guerrilla-style warfare in some situations. And the government fighting them with the armament stockpile that belongs to the country. Hmm. Huh. Huh. Lord. Armed civil conflict in the United States. A proper civil war. Fulfilling all the definitions of a civil war. Inhabitants only. Inhabitants only. No outside forces. No outside involvement. The world shocked. The world watching in amazement as an armed civil conflict breaks out in the United States. American versus American. No external forces. No intervention. Yah says, I will keep them from here. I, re I will repel them. I will repel them from here. People will be appalled. Watching. Horrified fascination. But not interfering. By divine decree. Kept away by the decree of the Lord. That Americans may fight each other. That Americans may fight themselves. You will fight worse than the first civil war. More viciously. The first civil war turned on an idea. Again, you will separate and bear arms and fight against yourselves because of an idea. Just an idea, an ideal, ideology. Because you can't marry... The idea of allowing another person to have their own views, of allowing another person to have their own thoughts, to think their own thoughts, to feel the way they feel. Because it's intolerable to you to accept the views of another person. You see only your view. You see only your way. Yah says they will become infused with a fury that cannot tolerate a different point of view. Imagine shooting yourselves over thoughts. Over thoughts. You're not fighting for needs. You're not fighting because you lack anything. You're not fighting because you can't get services, because you can't get goods. You fight over ideas, thoughts, expressions of beliefs coming out of one another. You cannot bear it and tolerate it. Madness operating in the population of this country until they pick up weapons and begin to shoot each other for their individual beliefs. It's incredible. I see war all through the territories of the United States. Spreading like a bushfire, spreading like a brush fire. Civil unrest, civil conflict, marching in the streets. Loud protests, loud noise, viciousness in certain communities. Gender-based violence, racially motivated violence. White versus black, black versus Latino. Like that. Hmm. Hmm. Lord. Have mercy. It's not going to be a question of mercy. It's not about that. Hear what the Lord says. You have refused mercy. When I handed it to you, you rejected it. You said you didn't want it. You said you knew better. You had a better way. You had a better plan. You refused my mercy. 
So I will give you my justice. I now give you my justice. Hear the words of the Lord. The justice of the Lord is this. For your sin and for your mockery. And for your hardness of heart. Three years of civil war to the nation of the United States. In the sight of all nations, you will fight yourself. In front of foreign nations, you will fight yourself, America. And this violence will come upon you sooner than you think. Much sooner than you think. A conflagration, a conflagration, a raging fire out of control. That is what a conflagration is. A fire that is so hot, a fire that is so wild, a fire that is so unpredictable that it rages out of control in all directions and it carries with it such a high toll, especially in how it devours lands and properties. That's the reason they, they don't just call it a fire. It is a, is, it is a particularly type of engulfing fire that has a very high toll, damaging in terms of fatalities, in terms of how it devours land, available land and properties. A devastating type of fire. It, it's the kind of fire that eats up several buildings in the block before they manage to put it out. It can take down a whole forest if nobody is able to get to it in time. Hmm. Lord. Lord. This is a hard saying. But it's one I've given you for years. It is one that I've given you for years. I will stop it here. Lord, this is the word of the Lord to you, America. You won't be forgiven for this thing that you have done. This lie that you have told that God is not alive in our generation, that God does not speak, you will not be forgiven for this thing. You have brought a terrible calamity to us. You have brought a terrible judgment to us. Hmm. A civil war of great proportions, an engulfing war. A war that will separate the United States into territories and teams. America will break up into teams. America will break up into sheltered lands and bad lands and government occupied lands. Just like some type of Hunger Games. People will be riding those is it called a utility bike? An off-road utility vehicle? Something like a something like a like a tractor, a dirt bike, some kind of vehicle that goes on the dust, that goes on the rough terrain, but it doesn't have everything around it like a car. It doesn't look like a car. Off-road utility vehicle let's call it that people will be riding that people will have guns people will have sunglasses people will have hats people will have stubble people will have um camo pants and dark olive green shirts or tan shirts desert storm people god is saying desert desert storm veterans <coughs> are going to come out to fight. Iraq war people 
will 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 be very active to not lose their freedom, to not lose their autonomy to the government because the government will become so bloated and the government will become so greedy and the government will become so vengeful and the government will become so overreaching and so out of control. The U.S. government is going to become punch drunk on power. The U.S. government power system, these people are going to completely depart from absolutely everything that is contained in the constitution. The constitution will be just like, the constitution will be like that paper that you use to wrap gifts before you put it in the gift bag, that tissue paper, just totally inconsequential. The Lord saying it's not going to mean anything. You might as well stop memorizing it. Now he says, it's not going to carry any value. No court, no court will take it into consideration because of martial law, because of a military law, a higher style of law that is just based on um, immediate, immediate, it's not violence, immediate verdict. Immediately they bring you to court. They will judge you right there. They will sentence you right there. If they catch you, if they catch you as an insurrectionist, if they catch you as what will be called rebels, enemies of the state, immediate justice, you will get immediate justice. They bring you to court. They accuse you. They sentence you right there. Sentence is death. Sentence is public hang hanging. Sentence is to be made an example of. There's no back and forth. I need to speak to my client. Nothing. If they catch you, they will sentence you right there and make an example of you as an enemy of the state. As a treason, as a treasonous person, as a rebel. Yah says the government will be bloated. The government will be fat and the government will be dripping with the blood of the people in the country. Responsible for many deaths. The U.S. government will put many people to death. Like Khmer Rouge. Khmer Rouge in Cambodia. The terror reign of Pol Pot. That is how it will be. Sanctimonious ju judgment. Sanctimonious justice. We're doing this for the safety of the government against the rebels. We're doing this to keep the cities safe. Complete overreach, complete, unable to be contained. The government will not be able to be contained by the American people. The government will not kowtow to the laws that operate in the country now. The government will not bow to honor the laws that make it the government in the first place. He says it will rise above the constitution, rise above the laws that made the government and supersede them and become something greater than the system of laws that exists in the United States. He says you have checks and balances for nothing. The government will burst its banks like a river surging out of control. Just the way the rivers rise in times of flood, the United States government is going to rise above the very laws that govern this nation and then break the laws down so that it can operate with impunity outside of the legal system. You will not have anything called a lawyer anymore or a criminal justice system or a justice system at all. You will have a military tribunal kind of government, people sitting in robes that will just say guilty. The penalty is death like Hunger Games. Nothing seen like it before modern times in modern times. Nothing seen like it in modern times. Kangaroo court justice. They catch you. They bring you in that same day. They hang you in the public square. You will be hung outside like it's the 1800s. And I'm seeing them. They bring a person in wearing some kind of gray tunic, ridiculous gray tunic into a courtroom. Four judges on the, be on the bench, all in red, looking like something out of the 1800s. 
they also have tunics, but their tunics are big and long and red with big buttons in the front. They just judge you quickly. Guilty. Did you or did you not do this? Did you or did you not say this? <laughs> Nobody representing you or somebody useless and complicit representing you so that the state always wins. God says reign of terror. You think it is a storybook. You think it is a fairy tale, but I speak to you from afar. I speak to you of the future to come, the future that is being crafted for you. A reality, a reality that I have seen and delivered to my servant and you cast it off and say it is a fairy tale. It is nothing to fear, but it's your reality. Even now it is coming upon you. You have changed nothing. You have shifted nothing. You have escaped nothing. The blood of the marchers will run in this nation of the United States. For the word of the testimony that is contained in Revelation chapter 18 must be fulfilled. The word of the testimony of Revelation 13, the seat of the beast, and the trampling down of the tribes, the tongues, the nations, and even the holy people must be fulfilled. Before Russia ever comes here, you will fight a war here. You will fight a war here. Before any invasion, before any secret attack, before anything, you will fight here among yourselves. A spiritual madness comes upon you and you separate. I just see yeast coming out of bread, which is impossible because you activate the yeast, you put it into the flour, it bakes the bread. How can yeast come out of bread? But God says, I will take the leaven out of you by the things that you suffer. Because you say that you will not suffer, you will suffer. And the yeast, the pride the elevation that is in your heart, it will come out of you by force. I will take the leaven out of you by force and leave you like these humble flatbreads that they have in the Middle East. They bake their bread, they don't have yeast, it's just very flat. You will not be a risen, puffed up bread. I will draw all the leaven out of you until you become a very humble, flat bread in front of all your sisters and brothers in the nations. <sighs> this is the word the Lord is giving me. America, because of the things that you do, you do to God, the, the disrespect, the gullible disrespect. You are so gullible. You are so easily lied to and misled. And you allow people to froth you up like a sea against God. As if you think you can climb into heaven like the Tower of Babel. And, and, and chastise him. The things you do is why we end up where we end up. As if you can win against God. As if you can outsmart him. Why do you try to outsmart me? God is saying. Why do you try to outdo me? Why do you try to gainsay me? Why do you try to get the last say over me? He says. Why will you speak when I speak? Who has done this thing that you speak when I speak? You are a people of calamity and woes. A people of calamity and woes. Calamity meaning just like when a roof collapses. That's the only picture I can see. That's the only thing that properly explains it. It's not a calamity is not an ordinary problem. A calamity is not what we call a difficulty. A calamity is a sudden horrible occurrence. Like when the roof falls in and then when you rush in, you find that the part of the roof that collapsed is where the babies are sleeping, is where your teenager sleeps. 
It's like a building on fire and you can't get anybody out. A nation of calamity and woes, woes, sorrows, things to cry about, things to mourn. The will of the Lord is the will of the Lord. This message has come for a very long time, consistently the same message across years. I will really, I really will, will stop it here.